With that being said, at this time, brothers and sisters, we welcome Rochelle Jones uh, as she leads us into our um, uh, memorial program, and then you will be in the hands of our officiant. Greetings to all of the family, friends, PG members, and any guests. I started from the rear with this greeting and welcome to the celebration of Helen Hollins. The Hollins family put together a program to celebrate the life of their loved one. So I wanted to make sure that from the rear, everyone heard and would receive their welcome as they go through this program today to celebrate their loved one. So without any delay, they also have put together an MC for today to guide us through this celebration. That is First Lady Stacy Clayton from the Peaceful Living Worship Center. Let's give her a hand as we welcome her to this. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. And there go my slippery fingers. Good morning again and good afternoon. Can we all just give God a good hand praise again? We are so grateful and blessed to have each one of you in our midst on today. We know that some of you may be here with a heavy heart, amen, but we know that Helen Hollins, Helen Elizabeth Hollins would not want that, amen? So we're asking you to dig real deep, real deep and give a smile to her and God on this morning and be happy that you're able to be in this place because we know that God is the one who lifts up the bow down head. He removes every sorrow, amen? So we don't have to be sad on today, amen? Amen. And I don't hear those amens coming back, but I know they're in there. So I'm gonna let you slide on today, all right? But I just want to start before we go any further. I just want to give you a little scripture. Amen. Because that's what I do. I am an evangelist also. So I'm going to give you a little scripture. And this one I'm going to give you is Psalm 6, 116 and 15. And it says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. And we know that Helen was faithful. We know that she loved God until the very end. Amen. And so on, without further ado, we're going to go on into their service. Amen. We have our prayer and our prayers get, being given today by Minister Leonard Harris. Is he here on today? Amen. God bless you. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, our Creator, Maker of all that is, Father, we just pause in this moment just to say thank you, to lift our voice, just to acknowledge that you are the creator of all that is life and the transformation of life and the resurrection of life. And Father, it's another day's journey and we are glad about it. And we thank you for allowing us to draw ourselves together and gather ourselves together as a body of one to recognize and to give credence to the life of Mrs. Hollins. We thank you for her spirit. We thank you for her presence with us and we thank you for her commitment and her dedication and her enthusiasm of her faith and how she expressed it and used it as an example to draw others. And Father, we just ask that as you look in on those that have gathered here today, there may be some that are grieving there may be some sorrow, but Father, we know that you have already taught us that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. And we thank you for that this morning. And Father, we ask that you would compel and then convict us by your word to let us recognize that in these old temples, these may perish. But while they perish on the inside, there is another being that is being renewed. Help us to not look on the things that are seen with the naked eye because those things are temporary, but help us to focus on the things that we cannot see because those are the things that are eternal. And we thank you and celebrate that in this moment and right now, we recognize that death, where is your sting? 
grave, where is your victory? It is all swallowed up in the everlasting and eternal life of God. We thank you that when we leave here, we are present with you. And eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it even entered into the heart of man what you have prepared for those that love thee. And we celebrate that. We ask that you would continue all of your blessings, your peace, and your comfort upon everyone under the sound of my voice. And we ask it all in the name of Christ, and for his sake we ask it. Amen. Amen. Before I go on, I would be remiss without saying, Pastor Letcher, thank you for allowing us to be in your presence on today and to be here with the saints of God on this celebration. And I give honor to you, to God, and to my husband on today, Pastor Fred Clayton, and to the family. Thank you. Also, we have our scripture reading, and I think I heard her beautiful voice as she came in and her beautiful smile. That is none other than Mother Marie Holt. If you would all um, turn your attention to her as she blesses us with the scripture reading. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I must share this with the family uh, before I read the scripture. When Helen and I would have prayer, when we would talk over the phone, we would talk about reading God's word. And as we began to study a little of God's word, we turned to the 91 number of Psalms, not knowing what Helen says to me, oh, Sister Holt, that's one of my favorites. So I will be reading from the 91 number of Psalms. Whosoever dwell in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the foul snare and from the de deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but I will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. God's word for God's people. God bless you, Mother. Amen. Next on our program, we have a musical selection by the Pleasant Green Church Choir. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. As uh, Dion and I were talking about musical selections um, and also Todd, for today, we agreed that because this is a celebration, everyone can join in. Uh, the, the choir is, is uh, here and representing, but these songs are songs everybody knows. So as soon as you catch it, come on and join in, okay? Clap your hands, stomp your feet, stand up, whatever you wanna do, whatever your expression is, but join in with us, please.
you. Let's give the Lord a hallelujah. Hallelujah is the highest praise to a God who is worthy, to a God who is that great, to allow us to have that time that we have with Helen. Only a God who loves us tremendously would give us such a beautiful gift as Helen was to all of us. Amen. So let's say hallelujah one more time to a God that loves us that much. Amen. See, I'm not about, I see my brother right now, but I'm not about to let us cry. He has a reason to cry because that light that was his mother, he won't get to see her here, but we're going to see her again. Amen. But we're not going to be sad. All right. We're not going to, I want you all to be excited and joyful. Amen. Because I'm excited to be here. Amen. It's such an honor to be here. It's an honor. Amen. Next we have our life reflections. And as you look at the pictures, we would like you to read the life reflections silently to yourself. Amen. 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 If you did not get a chance to finish, we ask you to take some time to get to know Helen as we did and go ahead and read it yourself at home and just kind of think about what she represented to you and what she represented to each of us in this room. Amen. Amen. Next, we have on our program, we have um, the acknowledgments and we have Ms. Rochelle Jones who will come and read those for us at this time. To the family of Helen Holland, Pastor Marlinda and I, joined by the entire Church Christ family, extending our most sincere condolences.
during your season of bereavement, you are in our thoughts and prayers. When one of our members weeps, we weep. However, we are not without hope because we can place our trust in God. Psalms 46, 1 encourages us that God is our refuge and strength and our ever-present help in trouble. And we encourage you and family and friends to turn to God in this time of loss and pain. God is faithful to hear and answer the cry of his people. Our prayer is that the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort will strengthen you and bring healings to your heart. We welcome you to let you know that we can be, if, if we can be of any further support and comfort to you, may God bless you and keep you. Our kingdom, Reverend David D. Iron, lead pastor of Christ Church. To the family of Helen Holland, I would like to express my condolence to the Helens, to Helen's family and friends. My husband Gary and I first met Helen three and a half years ago when we moved into the same condo building in the Central West End. We thank God for directing our path to cross. She became a true and cherished friend. Helen and I took long early morning walks together in Forest Park almost every weekday. Helen was a joyful and continuously giving thanks to God. She expressed gratitude for her physical abilities, for the beauty of his creation visible throughout the park, for her family and her friends and for trials in her life that has strengthened her faith. We would thank, we would talk about the world and local problems and of course, how to solve them. But mostly we talked about Jesus and how thankful we were that he, can, he was in control of everything, both now and in the future. Her positive attitude taught me so much. For Helen to live was for Christ and to die was gain. I miss those talks and hearing her wonderful laugh, but I know that I will see her again. I know that she is now, what she is now doing in heaven is what she did here on earth, singing praises to God and King through Sister Brenda Jackson. To the family of Helen E. Hollins, I moved to Dallas from Seattle in late 2004. The following year, I attended a job-related conference where I met Helen Holland. We immediately connected. As we shared time at lunch that week, we identified we had a common ground. We were Christians and loved the Lord. I'll always remember how transparent she was about her relationship with him and how she wept as she talked about God's goodness. She left that conference knowing that we would be friends for life. Although we met in, 2000 and in 2005, we would speak with each other over the phone almost daily. It would be another 10 years before we saw each other's face again. This was at my home in Dallas Mansfield. I introduced my family to my friend Helen and I enjoyed being a hostess to her during her stay. Wow, only to face-to-face -to -face encounter with Helen, but we had a profound friendship. I will remember her laugh and our discussions about decorating, shared passion about our job at the VA, which she always thanked God for, her style of clothes, family, and so much more. Helen Hollins lived a life that was a true example of a woman after God's heart. Cheryl Johnson, colleague and friend. To the family of Helen E. Hollins, the words, the words of sympathy are written on behalf of Helen's numerous colleagues and friends who work with her at the Department of Veterans Administration New Jersey Healthcare Center. 
Words may not suffice to express the hardships for that we feel for the passing of our mother and our former co-worker, Helen Holland. To many of us who work with Helen at the Department of Veteran Affairs, New Jersey Healthcare Center, we were more than a colleague or a manager. Helen was a mentor, a role model, and mostly a friend. Whether professionally, as a medical record administrator, or personally, Helen had the ability to reach out to people and offer her assistance to anyone that may be in need. She had a gift of communicating and relating to people from all walks of life, which, she, which is why she was so instrumental in employee development and mentoring programs. Helen stressed education and career development to all she called it, to all she came in contact with. Helen's encouragement and mentoring led many of us to attain our professional certificates, college degrees, and new job professions. In other words, Helen's life was impacted. When Helen retired to go home to St. Louis to be with you all, her family, whom she loved and cherished immensely, she left her VA family with three gifts or life lessons. These life lessons are love God, love yourself, and live in truth. Thank you for sharing Helen with us. She will be sorely missed, but be assured that her legacy is alive and well in those she touched and worked at the VA. With warmest regards and deepest sympathy, Spring Strickland, VA colleagues and friends. To the family of Helen Hollis, Pastor Lecture, and the entire Pleasant Green family expresses our deepest condolences to your bereavement of your loved one, Helen Hollis. Sister Hollins joined us in worship service a few Sundays before she restored her membership back at Pleasant Green in September of 2022. She was ready on day one to serve in ministry in any capacity. She contacted one of our members almost daily because she was ready to be active in any ministry that she could serve. Her warm and gentle spirit was very noticeable throughout our church. Family, Helen lives in your heart, in your memories, and will always be there. May you find peace and comfort in knowing that she touched so many lives. Matthew 5, 4, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. To the family, may God your hope what God has prepared for us is far better than what we leave behind. John 14, 1 through 6. If we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we will see our loved one again. It is promised in his word. Weeping may be endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Our prayers are that God would comfort each of you. Prayerfully submitted in love. Pleasant Green Baptist Church. Dr. Eric K. Lecture, the pastor. The family wishes to express their sincere, sincere appreciation to everyone for all the prayers and any acts of kindness shown during this time of bereavement. May God's continuous blessings be yours. That's from the Holland family. Thank you. Amen. As they were, as I was listening to the all of the tributes or the acknowledgments. Something came to my mind, I'm gonna share it for a moment. But I wanted to ask if we could get some tissue for the family on the front row and kind of help them out a little bit. Amen. I saw baby girl wiping her tears with her sleeve. I wanted to help her a little bit. Amen. Um, we have a history with the Hollins family, particularly um, Todd and Dion. And I'm looking at their children on the front row, and they haven't seen me in a while, and they probably don't know who I am, but that's okay. But we were friends for years, and our children were little together. And 
You all had come to our house a few times and we came to you all's house. I know you don't remember us and that's okay. But um, now that I'm looking at them, I see the legacy that Helen has left and I see Chan and I don't know you, but I've heard of you and I'm here for you all. But when I had the privilege to meet Miss Helen, we had so much in common. I grew up in San Jose, California and Todd. The part that I did know about Todd was that they also grew up in California. And so when I met his mother just last year actually, or I think the year before, we became really good friends immediately. And she played such an integral role in my husband and my life because of the meeting that Todd set up between us. And that's something private that we will share and remember her for forever. But something many of you know about her, and I heard it touched upon in one of the letters, is that she had great style, and she was very stylish. And for a brief moment, when she found out that I was a former salon owner, she approached me, and she said, Stacy, can you do my hair? Because she didn't really want to go to a salon because you know she had some things going on, and she didn't really want them in her business. And so she said, can you do my hair? And I said, yes, ma'am. So she came over to my home and we got to talk. And I did her hair and she went to the bathroom and she looked and she won her hats. I don't know if the one she wore, but that day she wore a hat and she often would wear hats. This particular day, I've never seen her without her hat, but when I did her hair that day, I looked up, I walked her out to the car and I said, bye, Miss Helen. We hugged and she said, bye, baby. See you later, we hugged. And she pulls off. I go back in the house and her hat's sitting in the house. And I said, wow, she left her hat. I said, she never leaves her hat. So I called her really quickly thinking she was right down the street. She could turn around and come get her hat. She said, baby, I don't need that hat. I said, oh, you think you cute, huh? She said, girl. And I just fell out. We laughed on the phone. Miss Helen was a woman of style. She loved to look good. She loved to look good. And I said, well, make sure you let Todd see your hair. She said, girl, Todd don't care nothing about my hair. But she cared about her hair. And I'm so honored that she allowed me those few opportunities to be a blessing to her. And I told the family, there's nothing that I wouldn't have done for them on today. Nothing I could have done to repay the blessing that you gave me, Todd, by introducing me. got through it. <laughs> Woo! The blessing that you gave me by introducing your mother to us. So I thank you. I know she's up here with her hair done. Look at good. <laughs> thank God. Next we have words of encouragement by none other than my own husband, Pastor Frederick Barrington Clayton of Peaceful Living Worship Center. Can you give him a hand, please? Praise the Lord. Can we get a praise the Lord in the house? Praise the Lord. We just thank God for each and every one of you on today. We know God has blessed us to see this day that we hadn't seen before, and we just want to honor him by giving him another praise. Can we put our hands together and praise our great, great big God on today? We thank God for the angel and the pastor of this church. Can you give him a hand at this time? the other minister pastor that's here as well as well as the family and we are just so excited about this day praise God and we just so glad for the life uh, that Miss Hollins left for each and every one of us it's a blessing when some you can have someone in your life that's always has their mind stayed on the Lord because we know in this day and in this time praise God that uh, oftentimes our minds do travel and, and go in other places. But when you can have a mind that is stayed on God in the midst of everything that is going on, you are truly blessed. And she was a blessed woman of God and she certainly did not, uh, was not ashamed of the gospel and to display her walk with Christ. And even though our hearts are heavy here in this place right now, Knowing that we serve a God that cannot lie and cannot fail, we have an assurance that if we walk up right before God, our feet will certainly be on streets paved with gold. 
So we need to realize and just think about the good times that we had with her. Because should the Lord delay his coming, all of us will have to pass this way. But there's nothing wrong with passing this way as long as you know that Jesus Christ is your Savior. Well, praise God. God sent his son to down the cross for our sins that we might have a right to the tree of life. But one thing about the Lord, he is a gentleman. He does not force himself upon anyone. He stands at the door and knock. Whoever will open up the door, he will sup with them and we will sup with him, praise God. So while you have a chance on today, as with the godly example that Miss Hollins left for all of us, she would always say to me, I don't worry about it, Fred. I give it over to the Lord. Well, praise the Lord. You know how she would do that. Well, praise God. And you knew there was a conviction there because of the trust and the hope that she had in God. But guess what? We serve a God that has not a respect of person. And each and every one of us, praise God, can get to know the Lord in the pardons of our sins and know that, hey, we can make it to heaven also. Well, praise God. One thing about the Lord and when he sent Jesus, he said in his word that hell was not made for us. It was made for the devil and his angels. Well, praise God. And so a man liveth, so shall he die. And we are just so glad for the life that she lived and the example that she gave. So let's not let this day pass if we don't know the Lord. And let's make it our business to tell the Lord and repent and be godly sorrowful for the wrong that we have done. Because one thing is for sure, the enemy who's the accuser of the brethren, he is after your soul. What can a man or a woman give for exchange for their soul? Nothing. It's the most valuable thing that you have and God certainly does not want the enemy to partake in that but guess what you have a part to play in your eternal destination and we just thank God that for the example that she have left praise God that our prayer her prayer and all of us that know the Lord is that those that don't know him get to know him and even though this day may come, everything will be all right. Praise God. Yes. yes, hallelujah. One thing about a preacher, what's in them is going to come out. And if you live a life pleasing unto God, what's in you is going to come out too. Amen. I pray and I thank God for Miss Helen. I thank God for her sons and for you all. But I thank God, most of us, I mean, most of all, <laughs> for a life with him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank God. I sat there and I said, how can I stay seated? I have to be dignified. But I hope you all can see me clapping <laughs> because God is good like that. Amen? Amen. Right now, we are going to embark upon allowing the family to come and bless us and grace us with tribute to Miss Helen, amen. amen? And in your mind, even if you're not one of the family members that's gonna give a tribute, think of what you would say if this was your opportunity to give words about what Miss Helen meant to you, amen? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dion Hollins. And mother-in-laws are often thought of in a, not in a positive light. I was very fortunate to have a very close relationship with my mother-in-law. And in fact, referred to her as mom number two. I'm very blessed to have my mom here today. Amen. And very blessed to have had um, two mothers. And when I think about um, mom number two, I actually have her number saved in my phone as, as mom two. Um, our relationship was an interesting one because it was a long distance relationship. And when Todd and I married in 1992, she had just moved away to East Orange, New Jersey. 
but that did not stop us from having a close relationship. I think over the last three decades, we must have had hundreds of phone conversations, and if not hundreds, thousands. And we would talk about our family, we talk about um, what was happening there with her in East Orange. We talked about everything. It was easy. The conversation was easy. And when she uh, returned to St. Louis, we had an opportunity to spend more time together face to face. And some of my fondest memories were uh, we went to uh, the farmer's market at Soulard to do our shopping for Thanksgiving dinner. And then we would prepare um, Thanksgiving dinner together, and she would always make the dressing. And we also had an opportunity um, uh, to attend Bible study fellowship on Wednesday nights together. She would attend in New Jersey, and I was attending here. And when she came back, I would pick her up every week on Wednesday night, and we would go to study God's word together. That was a blessing. And now, as I have been reflecting over the last month, something that I didn't know in the moment, but I know now, is that she was passing on to me her faith, her strength, and her courage. And so now when I want to pick up the phone and, and call her to ask a question, to get advice or an, you know, her opinion on something, Although I can't do that now, I know exactly what she would tell me. Mm -hmm. And so for that, I'm very grateful. Amen. Thank you. Amen. I'm sit sitting here watching, trying to be a good little sister. <laughs> I guess he didn't need what I thought he needed. Sorry. Amen. Right now we have, I think that we're going to pick up the mood a little bit. And let's do, we, we, we're on for another musical selection. Is that all right with you ladies? Can we go ahead and do that? All right, amen. Let's have another musical selection. Thank you. 
We do have the victory on today. And I have the victory over my memory, amen? They distinctively told me two people were given a tribute, and I rushed a little bit. So we want to call up Todd's aunt. She wanted to have words. Amen. I do apologize. Morning, afternoon. Morning. You have to be. I have a cold. Well, I really have pneumonia, so bear with me. This is just a takeaway for us to remember Helen. And what I want you all to look at is, as they have said earlier, Helen was a person of person, and she loved everybody. And whether you were married into the family or you were born into the family, she really loved you and she loved you daily. And what I want to look at is 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It's the chapter of love. And we're looking at verses 6 through 8. And it says, love does not delight in evil. And Helen was not an evil person. No. We may have misunderstood her at times, but she was truly sincere. And she rejoiced in the truth. And she trusted God. And she was always present. She would live daily in our lives. She knew us and she was concerned about us. She always hoped for us. And that hope was that we would come to realize that we were destined to be successful and that we were destined to one day go to heaven and we were to trust in Christ. Helen was always present. She wasn't into the future. She wasn't into the past. She was concerned today each and every day of our well-being. And with that, her love never failed. No matter what we thought, and no matter what, how we interpreted actions, because we're carnal, we're of the earth, and we're not that person that she was. She was different from us. And that's good because we're all different from each other. Helen practiced this love every day and she wished only the best for us. And this was her prayer, that no harm would come to us, no matter what we did, no matter if we were good, bad, the ugly, the indifferent. 
Helen still loved us. And she wanted us to learn to trust God and to obey God. That was her prayer. She wants to see us join her in heaven. She wants us to be reunited in the everlasting glory of God. Her hope was that we would be successful here on earth and eventually in heaven. Daily, Helen prayed for us. And in her passing, she has not failed because she leaves to us that legacy of hers. She was a prayer warrior and she prayed for each and every one of us, her family, her friends, her church, her Trump, everybody she <laughs> prayed for. <laughs> so we, as the members of this family, it is our duty to carry on. Amen. We're the new prayer warriors. And I will, as the last one in this group, born before this century, the turn of the century, it falls on me to pray for each and every one of you. But it also falls on you to pray for your family, your friends, your churches, your neighbors, and most of all, your children. This is going to be trying times come, and there's going to be deception galore. So therefore, you have to take on this legacy of hers and become what she hoped and prayed that we would become, a loving family, a tight-knit unit, and prayer warriors. Go forth. Thank you. The Bible tells us that the way that we know that we love one another is when we when we can pray, I'm sorry, when we love one another, I'm sorry. Is there another tribute from the family? Amen. Good afternoon, lovely people. Um, for, who, for anyone who has never seen me before, I'm Kara. I am um, Dion and Todd's niece. I'll be 31 next month. Um, so that's how long that Helen has been around for as long as I can remember. Um, excuse me. I do have an active grandmother in my life, but as long as I can remember, with Helen being there, uh, all I can say is extra love. Um, these last few holidays, I was able to share with her I didn't come to realization what was going on, but I'm glad that my mind didn't know what was going on. Because looking back now, I'm able to cherish all the good times that we've had. Um, especially just two or three months ago, we had Christmas together. So I'm not going to hold you guys. Um, I do want to thank Dion and Ty and my mom for sharing Helen with me. Um, thank you so much for that. Because it's been love ever since 92. So... Thank you guys, I love everyone. We will have time for remarks from the family. I just wanted to make sure that there was, if there were any other actual tributes, and we thank God for your, your warm thoughts of Helen, because we all have something that we would love to say about her right now. But we do have a, we do have a section on our program for remarks. So if we have a remark, do you have a remark? And next one. You are welcome. And we ask that you keep your remarks to either two or three minutes. Amen. And I do know how to pull coattails. I was raised up in the old church, so I know how to get you. Good afternoon. My name is Gary Lewis. I knew Helen. Moved to Jersey. One of the highlights of my relationship with Helen is when she called me one day and asked me to escort her to the Nargol Ball. I said, Are you kidding? <laughs> she said, Yes, we're going. Helen was a person 
that I talk to just about every day. My routine in the morning was get in my car, start my car, call home, we talk that 45 minutes to an hour every morning. I miss you. If you have a, a, a remark, this is your time. And let me say, if you do have a remark, could you either go to the, this side of the building and just kind of maybe make a line in that aisle? That way I can know, and we don't want to wait to the last minute and, you know, have everyone popping up a little bit. Just everyone who would like to have a remark, if you could go to that side and line up there so that you could come up expeditiously. Thank you so much. Remembering Sister Helen Hollins. When Sister Hollins moved back to St. Louis, Missouri, she reinstated her membership with Pleasant Green Church. This took place during the pandemic when the church was allowed to open for Sunday service. She was eager to interact with her fellow members, sharing her love for Sunday school by immediately joining the Sunday school class held in the church sanctuary. Our first contact conversation started with the message about the new members class that was in the process of being set up for all new members since the beginning of the pandemic. Mother Mabel Briggs was the president of the Mothers and Deaconess Ministry and she assigned me to be Sister Holland's Christian accountability partner. Faithfulness, Christian experience, and commitment were demonstrated each time we talked at church services and by our phone conversations. She was excited to hear that the orientation for new members class would be starting soon. When the class opened, she was glad to be in attendance. I am glad that I got a chance to know Sister Helen Hollins personally by being assigned as her Christian accountability partner. She had a quiet manner who carried herself with gratitude and grace. She talked about joining the Mission Society of Pleasant Green before she became ill. I was led by the Spirit of God to call Sister Helen Holland on the day she passed, and I was unable to talk to her. Her daughter-in-law, Dion Hollins, informed me that she couldn't talk, but she wanted to hear my voice. With my lasting, encouraging words, little did I know that God was calling her to be with him. To the family, I pray that God will comfort your heart, uplift your spirit, and carry you through this time of sadness. Mother Georgia Dotson, Christmas Accountability Partner, Pleasant Green Church, Pastor Aaron Letcher. Hello, my name is Jermaine Reed, and I'm from Kansas City, Missouri, and I'm a friend of Justin Wilson, who is uh, Aunt Helen's nephew. I traveled here from Kansas City, Missouri to pay my respects to the family, to the friends of uh, Helen Hollins. A couple of memories that I wanted to share that I thought as I read through the program were uh, important to maybe point out from my own sort of memory of Aunt Helen. Uh, and Gary Lewis, who spoke uh, about the time for the inauguration. Uh, I remember staying at her home back in East Orange, New Jersey, 
uh, when we had just graduated from college. It was a wonderful opportunity and she cooked some good food and gave us a lot of good encouragement and good advice. And we got back about two o'clock in the morning. She said, sounds like y'all had a good time. It was really amazing for me some years later to be able to share an opportunity to open my home to her because the inauguration, she stayed at my home uh, there in Washington, D.C. when I lived there before going back home to Kansas City to run for office. Uh, and over the years, I've had quite an interesting relationship with Aunt Helen, who I affectionately call her. She will call me quite often and check on me. Most recently, I've had some health challenges, and she was one of those persons who called and prayed with me. Probably two weeks before her passing, uh, I had an opportunity to call her in the middle of the day. I said, I'm gonna call on Helen. And we talked for about 15, 20 minutes. And her last words without sharing in full conversation was, I love you. Not knowing that would be my last time and opportunity to speak with her. But I'm glad that I've had an opportunity to get to know her and often get those calls from her um, quite often <laughs> uh, and to be a family friend. So may she rest in peace. Uh, in my prayers and condolences to the family. Thank you. Good afternoon, people, and condolences to the family and friends. I'm a tenant of Miss Holland. She bought the building that was 100 years old, and we got to know each other. And she told me some things, and I, she was a comfortable person to be around. She just had that... Per, uh, loving and, and, and friendly personality. Had some plumbing work done on my apartment, so she would sit with the plumber, because she had to pay him and stuff. So she sat on my couch, and we watched some TV, and we talked and stuff like that. And I was saying, a good tenant is the one that pays the rent on time. She said, yeah, and, and the one that don't tear up the place, and the one that don't bother other neighbors. That's a good tenant, you know what I mean? <laughs> so we talked about family and stuff like that. And the reason why I'm here today, because letting you know that that was a, that was a wonderful woman, and it, it, it touched me because I had just lost my dad, and it touched me that that she had passed away. You know, I just want to come and, and you know say that she was a good woman all the way around. And we talked about death, and she said, I know where I'm going. So, you know, and I'm not going to hold you up, because other people want to say some good things about her, but, you know, that's kind of nice to see all her aspects of life, the things she did, business and, and work and church and everything, to see a well-rounded woman, wonderful woman. You hang in there. God bless. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you know that trouble don't last always. Oh, my Lord, oh, my Lord, what shall I do? What shall I do? Miss Aunt Helen, she was tried through the fire. She came through the fire. And she came forth as pure gold. Uh, I'm immensely grateful. You know, Justin is like a brother from another mother we attended. We can walk together and, you know, I would come by and it was fortunate and blessed enough with Sabrina and the rest of the family to enjoy Thanksgiving, you know, over the past, since 20, 2015, around that time when they would end up coming in either from Chicago or New Jersey. And, uh, it was an incalculable and valuable blessing to be connected with the family and enfolded with this entire family. To me, they're one of the greatest illustrations I've seen of truly showing solidarity and, and being galvanized and unified as a unit. Uh, because family ain't always family, you know, depending on the family that you're with, you know. Um, but I relish the time I had with Aunt Helen, the conversations that we had, and there were things I discovered in the life reflections that I was unaware of as well, too, you know. But um, it comes to mind in Psalms 1 about blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit at the, uh, the seat of mockers. But the law of the Lord is his delight, and on his law, his law is meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yeah. yields its fruit in due season, whose leaf does not wither, and whatever they do prospers. We see the prosperity in each and every single one of us who are currently here right now, 
the, the church service, and I know Aunt Ellen touched innumerable lives beyond that, you know, but seeing the, the determination that she exhibited as well after failing college and then returning years later, and just further remind as well, you don't have to be a product of your, your, your situation, you know what I'm saying, but it's about your motivation, your dedication and determination to be able to achieve your aspirations and ultimately trusting in the Lord with all your heart and lean out on your own understanding and all the ways to acknowledge him and he'll make your path straight, you know. So she followed Yahweh. She knew Yahweh was the way, the true and living God. You know, she was a fashionista and she definitely, you know, is looking, uh, you know, fabulously fly in her heavenly garments up there in the upper room with the Most High Heavenly Father. And I look forward to being united at some point with her each and every single one of us. So, you know, just show love, positivity, cherish people each and every single day of their life because nothing is promised to us, not even our next breath. And I just hope and pray, Most High Heavenly Father, just keeps you all folded in his love and supplies you with peace that surpasses understanding. His peace, not earthly peace, and knowing that, hey, this world gonna have many troubles, but at the end of the day, shoot, as long as you got the Most High Heavenly Father by your side and people that love and care for you, Every day is a new day, and just take pride and joy in the victories and the triumphs each and every day gives us. All right, much love. Amen. Amen. If there will be no more remarks, we're going to give, a, I'm going to ask one more time just to make sure if you have something on your heart, the family would like to hear it. But if you have nothing else to say, we're going to. <coughs> If you have nothing else to say, I'm going to relinquish my stand and tell each of you that it has been my joy, my honor, and my pleasure to be your MC on today, and I'm grateful for the opportunity. Thank you. Come on, let's give God some praise again. We give God praise again for the life, the legacy, and I'm sure all of you can reflect on some lessons that you have learned from Sister Hollins. Amen. We want to go to the word of God. You all have already eulogized Miss Helen. And to eulogize one simply means to speak a good word about those who are deceased. You've done an awesome job with doing that. We bless God for all of the clergy who is with us on today. We Bless God for uh, Reverend William Davy. We bless God for Pastor and First Lady Clayton. And we bless God for all of our ministers who uh, are with us on today. Um, this is a grievous time, but this is also a time for us to celebrate if you are a believer. Yeah. Right? Because those who are believers, we grieve in a different way. We grieve in a way that is full of joy because we know that this is not the end. We want to go to the word of God for the people of God. If you would follow me to um, 2 Timothy, as I have considered these life reflections, I'm reminded of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, and we just want to look at the sixth, the seventh, and the eighth verse, verses. I'm reading from the New International. Your rendering may be just a little bit different than mine, but this is what I have. 
I'm hearing it in her voice. She says, for I am already poured out like a drink offering. And the time for my departure is near. This is what she's saying to the family. I fought a good fight. I have finished my race. I have kept the faith. And brothers and sisters, as I read the life reflections, there was just a phrase that stuck out to me right in the middle of her life reflections. That first phrase right in the middle of her life reflections says, determined to finish. Determined, I'm, I'm about to shout by myself in here. She was determined to finish, determined to finish. And as I consider the etymology of that word, brothers and sisters, determined means a resolve, or not only a resolve, it means one being ready. So brothers and sisters, all I'm sharing with you today is that Sister Helen was ready to finish. As we, we reflect upon her life, brothers and sisters, all of you have come to understand it is undeniable that she was a follower of Jesus Christ. As we consider her life, it is undeniable that she has poured her life into you. She has poured herself into others. She has poured her compassion. She has poured the transforming power of Jesus Christ into you. And in the epistle of 2 Timothy 4, Verses 6 through 8, the Apostle Paul speaks of the well-emptied life of discipleship in this manner. He says, I have already been poured out. I've poured out and my time of departure is near. And might I suggest to you that you've never really, truly experienced discipleship until you have poured out your life into somebody else. Brothers and sisters, that's what she has done in her life. She has poured out into others, and now she is ready for her departure because now what she has or what was in her is now in you. She has invested in the journey of others so that you too can reach the finish line with a determined resolve. Brothers and sisters, there are a few things that stick out from this particular text that speak to me, and I hope it speaks to you. First of all, she was determined in her faith. She was determined in her faith. Here in the text, as the Apostle Paul feels the midst of the Jordan River, it's streaming across his face, brushing his face. Right now, he is about to cross over to the other side, but yet as he is about to cross over to the other side, it is important enough for him to talk to his protege, Timothy. Brothers and sisters, he was talking 
to Timothy and he was pouring out to Timothy the good things about his faith. And brothers and sisters, as I look at the life uh, of Sister Helen, she was pouring out her faith to all of those who were around her. She was adamant in Bible study. In other words, brothers and sisters, Bible study was something that was important to her. And, and, and when Bible study is important to one, that means, brothers and sisters, it is important for her to have a presence with God or be in the presence of God. It was important for her to talk to God. It, it was important for her to know God's will. It was important for her to know the Bible. And it was important for her brothers and sisters, to share the Bible with others. An identifying mark of those who are disciples is that they love to study, to hear, and to talk about the Word of God. Because she knew, brothers and sisters, that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing comes through the Word of God. I wish I had just one somebody in here willing to shout, brothers and sisters, a determining marker for a disciple is that you love to be in the Word. She knew that the Word was important to her. She knew that the word was a lamp unto her feet and she knew that the word was a light unto her path and she knew that at the word of God the seraphims and the angels fly. She knew that at God's word that the cherubims would bow. She knew that at God's word man will lay down and die and by the same word man will get up and live again. She knew that at the word of God space and time come into existence. She knew that Thy word, at thy word, everything that was not became something. Because to know the word is to be transformed by the word. And brothers and sisters, and I suggest this to you today, uh, that when you are transformed by the word, brothers and sisters, the word cannot be buried. The word cannot be disguised. The word cannot be hidden. As brothers and sisters, I share with you is that the word was on the inside of her. And it was a light. And it was as her voice. And we know that when the word is on the inside of us, it it tends to get on everybody who is around us. David said it kind of like this. He says that uh, uh, when God blesses us, what happens is that our cup runs over. And when our cup runs over, brothers and sisters, others become saucers. And I suggest this to you today, brothers and sisters, that her cup ran over in such a way that the family became saucers to the Holy Spirit. I'm honored today to be able to serve as her pastor, although I didn't get a chance to know her long. One thing that I do know and one thing that I do sense is that she was one of deep faith. Brothers and sisters, her faith enabled her to look beyond her present. And I pray that 
her faith does the same thing to you. That you are able to look beyond your prison. And when you are able to look beyond your present brothers and sisters, you are able to see eternal life. Her faith enables her to look beyond her present circumstances to see the hope that tomorrow holds. And I want to lend that hope to the family. In that, brothers and sisters, this is not the end of mama. This is not the end of aunt. This is not the end of grandma. This is not the end of sister. But brothers and sisters, one of the hope that one of the hopes that I want to lend to you this afternoon that you will see her again. Undoubtedly, unmistakably, you will see her again because her faith has seeped out on to you. She was also determined in her fight. The Apostle Paul, as we consider this particular pericope, he says, I have fought a good fight. And if anyone has ever been in a fight, you're, and if you are really honest about it, you can admit that a fight is not an easy thing. Some blows you take can weaken your morale. I'm reminded, brothers and sisters, of an interview of the former boxing heavyweight champion, Evander Holyfield. He was asked, who was the hardest opponent you have ever faced in the ring? He said, I fought a lot of the toughest ones, but the hardest fighter that I had ever faced was Dwight Muhammad. In 1996, at the point, the longest fight, that was the longest fight that I had ever fought. It was eight rounds, but this fight, went on for 15 rounds and lasted for an hour. And by the end of the fight, I had lost 15 pounds just trying to keep him off of me. And when asked, how were you able to win the fight? He simply says, I just did not quit. And all I'm trying to share with you today in your faith, you better not quit. Keep on fighting. Keep on swinging. Keep on praying. Keep on singing. Keep on shouting. Keep on putting your hopes before the Lord. Keep on going because the fight is not given. The race is not given to the swift, nor the fight to the strong. I feel like tuning today. But it's to the one that holds out until the end. Brothers and sisters, this serves as a reminder to someone here today because there are a lot of fights in life that you'll find yourself in. You don't have to go looking for them. They'll find you. You don't have to ask for them. A fight will find you. You don't have to start nothing. It seems like in life it'll start with you. But life has a funny way of finding the children of God and instigating a fight. Some of them will last more rounds than you think you can handle. Some of them will hit you with blows that you don't think you can take. And this perhaps is a round you perhaps, you may not think you can take. But as Paul says, having done all to stand, just keep on standing. Just keep on standing. Stand on the will of God. Stand in the way of God. Stand on the word of God. 
Because one thing that I share with you, brothers and sisters, if you stand on the word of God, what the word of God says is the whole world will pass away. But if you stand on the word of God, it says heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word. Stand on the word of God. I believe that's what Miss Helen gave you, the word of God. She wants you to stand on the word of God because all of these things will pass away. But if you stand on the word of God, she'll get you into heaven. And brothers and sisters, and I just want to share this and I'm done. Uh, she was determined to finish. She was determined unto her finish. Apostle Paul submits unto us today that he fought a good fight he took some blows he was beat upside his head he was kicked he was punched but brothers and sisters at the end of the day uh, he finished his course he kept the faith therefore he reminds us that his departure is at hand what a wonderful thing for it to be at the finish line. There's just a feeling of peace that embraces us when we have done everything that God has called us to do even in the face of adversity. It's a wonderful thing to stand on your convictions even after you've been bloodied, brothers and sisters, and you stand on your convictions at the finish line. Sense of peace envelops us, and when you are ready, you ain't got to worry about getting ready. I want you to understand this. This is what Miss Helen wants you to understand. You get ready. Because if you're ready, you ain't got to worry about getting ready. I'm reminded of when my wife used to travel for her job. She traveled so much, brothers and sisters, that she was familiar with all of the flight particulars. She was so familiar to where she knew the flight attendants. They called her by name, Sister Letcher, or Katrina. She wore the right shoes and she packed the right carry-ons and brothers and sisters not only did she wear the right shoes and not only did she get light for the flight she even knew exactly how much she could fit in her suitcase brothers and sisters to where it would be exactly 50 pounds on the nose because anything over 50 pounds they'll charge you 25 extra dollars Many times we would arrive at the airport, I would bet her if my bag was heavier than hers, and she would always win. And brothers and sisters, when we would arrive at the airport, uh, I used to witness that there were some people who were not ready for the flight because they had overpacked their bag. They wore the wrong shoes and sometimes because they were not ready, unfortunately, they missed their plane. I, I'm trying to help somebody today. I'm trying to help somebody today. Sometimes I've seen people miss their flights because they were not ready to get on board. But because Trina was familiar with the attendant. She was always fit for the flight. And it's a wonderful thing to be ready to board the Lord's flight and the plane and be ready for takeoff. Yeah. All I'm saying to you today, brothers and sisters, something similar 
happened to Mother Helen Hollis uh, not long ago. She was ready for the flight. I'm going to shout by myself. In other words, brothers and sisters, she took off uh, the old clothes and she put on uh, the robe uh, that was all white. Brothers and sisters, she got light for the flight. And all I'm suggesting to you is I just hear her voice saying, Summer, glad morning. When this life uh, is over, I'll fly away to be home in God's celestial shore. I'll fly away when the shadows of this life has gone. I'll fly away like a bird from the prison bars have flown. I'll fly away just a few more weary days. I'll fly away. Is there anybody here that knows that when the Lord calls your number, you can lift up and you can fly? Oh, glory. Oh, glory. I think we ought to be celebrating right now because she heard her call. She knew her flight and she heard the voice of the Lord that said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. You believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. He went away to prepare a place for us. And whether he go, you know the way. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some praise. I fly away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I fly away. Come on, let's give God one more great big hand clap of praise. For what God is doing. At this time, amen, there'll be another selection. Amen. Family has asked for a selection. And if you would, uh, pleasant praisers, would you give God your best with another song? Amen. Come on, let's bless God for. Yeah. Hallelujah. How can I say thanks for the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. All that I am and ever hope to be. I owe it all.
Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. This is a celebration, isn't it? This is a celebration. We bless God for, again, this opportunity to celebrate her life. Uh, at this time, um, we, of course, we acknowledge um, Reverend Clayton and First Lady Clayton she has done such a magnificent job in leading us through this service. Amen. And also, brothers and sisters, at this time, we want to ask um, the Reverend William Davy to come to uh, give us the benedictory prayer, and after which we will have uh, First Lady Clayton uh, to come and give us some instructions as we recession. And I want you to know that the repast is upstairs in the Pruitt Assembly Hall. May God bless you and keep you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Pastors here, audience, ministers. William Davy, I'm a, one of the pastors at the Journey Tower Grove where Dion and Todd and the kids are attend and it is a pleasure to be here to serve you in this hour in a homegoing celebration which this has been amen we celebrate the life and while we do that we laugh we cry we think of high moments we think of low moments we think of it all because that represents the entirety of a person's life and as you consider that today, consider all the trips that she took to the various continents, all the wardrobe changes she experienced in life. Her presence was special. You could tell by the words that have come forward. She was an impressive person who impressed everyone that she spent time with. To our young people, I want to say something to you. She came to know the Lord when she was a young person. She may have been grandma to you. And you think all of that wisdom and all of who she was just was with her as an older person. But I think she would like for you to know that the same struggles that you have as a young person, as a grandchild or more, that she had her struggles and she found her resolution. She found her salvation in Jesus Christ and she became, she wasn't all of a sudden instantly always this great woman of God, but she became this great woman who loved you in such a way that you experience it. There's, you know, she can't, y'all don't know this about me. I'm, I'm a 40 year funeral director. I've done funerals hundreds or thousands of times. Never figured out a way how we could put a person's car, the house, how the, all the vacation, vacation homes. We never figured out how all of their earthly possessions could be placed with them in, in the grave for transition. But if I could tell you something, and the only thing that we found out that makes the transition is love. 
See, love is a substance that can transition. Love can leave here, but also love can stay behind. And what you have in your hearts is the love that stays behind. But what you want to be happy about is the love she took with you. Is the love that you gave her while she was here. And so I would charge you on her behalf to live your life in such a way that when you leave here, you'll have a great amount of love to take with you. And like her, have a great amount of love that you've also left behind. Amen? Amen. Would everyone stand except for the family, please? As we have our benediction. And now unto him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you just as he has presented Sister Helen, blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forevermore. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Just a few instructions before you all depart. We would like for everyone to remain in your place while the family recesses out first and they will go over to the fellowship hall. And then once they are in place, then we can all join them. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You all can fellowship here until the family gets over there. Thank you so much.